Four young men officially arraigned before the magistrate court for several break-ins on Grand Bahama. I'm Italia Hall. More details straight ahead. Authorities investigating a plane crash off Bimini today. And the Grand Bahama Christian Council and Haitian pastors calling for special prayers for Haiti. The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition, starts now. This is the Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening all, I'm Shashina wolf Arkinson. As always, it is so great to have you with us. Topping news at the hour, police on Grand Bahama cracking down on a theft ring on the island involving churches and business establishments. This morning, four young men were formally charged before the magistrate's court in connection with those matters. But shortly before the arraignment, our Italia Hall spoke with the authorities who provided some more details into the investigations. The spree of break-ins took place over the past few weeks. Assistant Superintendent of Police Kosijin Ewing says the department received a number of complaints from churches and business establishments in the Freeport area, but the theft ring came to an end this past weekend. On Sunday, the 4th of August, um, there was an alarm activation at Dollar Deals, and officers from the Northeastern Division responded and caught four individuals inside the establishment. As a result of that arrest, that led to us recovering and solving our matters reference to the churches that were broken into and the items were stolen. All the, all the items that you see here were recovered, all the items from the churches were recovered, and we are happy to close this matter out and send our culprits to court so they can answer the charges. Now a total of seven business establishments were broken into on Grand Bahama, and as you can see behind me, keyboards, wires, microphones, televisions, and even a coffee maker were all stolen from the various places. We're now on a different time. Um, when I was young, I would never even think about going into a church and stealing items from a church. Now, young people see it as an opportunity because what, you, what you'll find with most churches, they, they don't have hardened security. We're now in an era where churches now must put in the, the, the security doors, security windows, even install cameras um, because it has come to that. Churches have very expensive items. These televisions, electronic stuff, these are expensive. He says all of the accused men are known to police. The recovered items have been identified and the owners will be able to collect them soon. Italia Hall, ZNS Network News. Now this morning, a group of men were formally charged in connection with those break-ins. Two juveniles aged 16 and 17, along with 18-year-old Demaine Sterling of Cherry Corner, Pioneer's Way, and 26-year-old Bernard Justin Marcellus of Explorer's Way, were arraigned in the magistrate's court before Magistrate Charlton Smith on numerous accounts of shop breaking, sacrilege, stealing, and receiving. They all pleaded not guilty to the charges. However, Bernard Marcellus is pleaded guilty to the charge of receiving. He was sentenced to 36 months at the Bahamas Department of Correctional Services. The other matters were adjourned to Tuesday, November 5th for trial. Bail was denied and they were all remanded to the Bahamas Department of Correctional Services. Meantime, 25-year-old Jermaine Thompson of Freeport and Florida was arraigned before Magistrate Charlton Smith in Magistrate Court No. 2 on grievous harm. He pleaded not guilty. His matter was adjourned to the 24th of September for trial. He was denied bail and he was remanded to the Bahamas Department of Correctional Services until trial. 21-year-old Shimiko Ewing of Blair Circle was also arraigned before Magistrate Charlton Smith in Court No. 2 on possession of a firearm with the intent by means to endanger life. He pleaded not guilty and the matter was adjourned to Tuesday the 5th of November for trial. He was denied bail and was remanded to the Bahamas Department of Correctional Services. The charges are in connection with a matter that occurred on Sunday, August 4th. 
Also in news from the crime beat, a female is hospitalized tonight following a shooting incident on Grand Bahama. According to police, shortly after 12 a.m. today, a female was taken to the Rand Memorial Hospital via a private vehicle with a gunshot wound to the chest. Police say preliminary investigations revealed that the incident occurred at a business establishment on Midshipman Road, where three adult males and two females allegedly made use of an illegal firearm when it reportedly discharged, hitting one of the females in the chest area. Now she is listed in serious but stable condition and investigations are continuing. The Grand Bahama man who was gunned down at a business establishment off East Sunrise Highway on Sunday, July 7th and later died has been identified as 38-year-old Patrick Jude Young. Police say shortly before 4 a.m. they were called to a business establishment off East Sunrise Highway where it was reported that a lone gunman reportedly opened fire hitting two males. One of the males sustained injuries to the upper body and the other to the lower body. They were both transported to the Rand Memorial Hospital via emergency medical services. Young died on Tuesday, August 6th at the Rand Memorial Hospital. Police on the island of Bimini are investigating the circumstances surrounding the crash landing of an aircraft off Cat Key. Reports are that shortly after 12 p.m. today, police received reports of a white and red twin-engine Piper plane crash landing in 15 feet of water near Cat Key with three American male occupants. The plane and occupants had arrived in the Berry Islands earlier today and were returning to the United States when they reportedly experienced engine difficulties difficulties and crash landed near Cat Key. There were no injuries reported and all parties were transported to Cat Key by a passing vessel. Police are continuously investigating. And switching gears now, Haiti for Christ and Christ for Haiti. That is what Christian leaders are declaring tonight as they join together to send prayers for the Caribbean country. In this report, Jamila Mizik tells us why the Grand Bomb Christian Council is partnering with the Haitian community in this regard. Haitian Christian leaders sending a cry for prayers against the strongholds of voodoo in that impoverished country. They say the week of August 12th, some 30 plus persons are reportedly planning to travel to Haiti in hopes of dedicating the country to Satan. Leader of House of Grace for All Nations, Pastor Abner Mius, is asking for help as they continue to fight a spiritual battle. We have uh, 34 uh, king of priests of voodoo. Uh, they have to come in from uh, the uh, um, Africa and we have some uh, voodoo priests in Haiti. They have to meet together. They are uh, supposed to have uh, 400,000 people that have to meet together. And you know the population in Haiti is, is a huge. So they have to come together just to re re dedicate the country to, to, to Satan. So we come here today to ask for the churches, uh, Christian Council, and uh, who permit me, uh, Pastor Lockard, and so we have to announce this. So we need help, not money. So we need help of prayer because we know with prayer, we could defeat the power of the enemy. Leader of New Jerusalem Church of the Nazarene, Pastor Raymond Charlot says, it is time to release Haiti to the Lord. I know for sure, if I pray, if you pray, if we pray together, nothing gonna be impossible to God. This country been uh, independence from 2,200 years plus, but since nothing go forward, everything go backward day after day. Enough, it's enough. Now, Grand Bahama Christian Council President, Reverend Robert Lockhart, says there has always been a unique relationship between the Bahamas and Haiti. He's appealing to the Christian community to join hands with Haiti and come together in a time of prayer. Let's come together and let's be praying for Haiti, for their um, political, economic, and most importantly, spiritual well-being as they face some of the challenges that they're facing and something that's about to take place in their nation um, on the 14th of August that they want us to join them in prayer that would not uh, succeed or take place. Jamila Mizek, ZNS Network News. 
Thanks, Jamila. Well, as the Broadcasting Corporation continues to mourn the loss of veteran employee Colin Trotman Jr., members of the ZNS Northern Service Retirees Association are also joining the corporation in mourning its passing and offering heartfelt condolences to his family. The statement reads that Colin, a pioneer in broadcasting, was one of the team members sent to the Northern Service to assist with establishing ZNS TV in the North. It continues that there were days he would walk to work rather than wait on others for a ride. The statement continues and says that Colin was a good team player who cared about others and always had a good word for all those he came in contact with. It also adds that his love for broadcasting was an example for many and true proof of the mantra that when you're doing what you love, it's never work. The corporation and the country has lost a true gem. There's so many people, so many people far back that that is a part of this and that needs to be recommended. I'm thinking of people like Miranda Ennis, um, Tiffany and Tanya, um, definitely Jensen Sweet, and I'm, I'm glad he's back because he's one of the trainers. Um, Dyer Meadows, Brando Stort, Philip Marsh, all this is them. This, this is their gift, they deserve this. Um, I can also say that, hey, as an AGM and as a trainer at that time, I was able to train someone to become a DGM, which is Dyer Meadows.